Okay, well good morning. In today's video, we're gonna install these Oldsmobile crossover plugs. So what you have here, let me get a light, is this is our intake side of our Oldsmobile number seven heads that came in like the early 70 350s. And you can see we have an exhaust port right there, or exhaust valve right there, and an exhaust valve right here. So what we have, you can see the larger valves, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust. And the valves come together and go out Siamese to the header on this side, but also they come together and go out this intake crossover. On the intake, this pretty much goes under the carburetor and it allows for faster intake uh, temperatures and also your choke on your carburetor to open uh, more efficiently. Uh, we're, we're more performance oriented, so we're not worried about this. So we'll get into also some of the, uh, I guess, specs in a way. So this is cast iron and this came with an Elderbrock Performer RPM back about 10 years ago, maybe even more. So start uh, did our first test fit and the plug was hitting in this area. And so we're gonna drop it back in. A little tappity tap. I want it to be a very snug fit, but I don't want to get um, or break into cast uh, iron. But this is what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be kind of tapping it, you know, decently, seeing where we're scrubbing and then taking our ziz wheel here and knocking some of it off. So I'm actually probably gonna go ahead and mark this spot. That way, one of the biggest complaints with these things is they rattle. Uh, so hopefully we can keep this somewhat tight and uh, prevent this from rattling. Okay, probably about 30 minutes later, and this is kind of what we have. Um, this padded sand disc, even though it's wore out, works really good. It's kind of a before and after. You see, it ain't it ain't much. It's just really forming the curve. And I really thought I can get this thing to press in, but this cast iron just is not budging. And uh, I got a little bit of lip right here, but all I do is I've been tapping it in. And let's see. Yeah. And you can see where it's hitting. See the those little chips? That's where I'm hitting. It ain't hitting nowhere else. I kind of want it flush without hitting because this cast iron is not giving. There is no... There is no uh, like press fit going on here. It's just, it's not really what I wanted, but it is what it is. Okay, we're making good progress. We just got the other side done and it's all smooth. This one went a little bit better. I almost had it as a press fit. And then, uh, yep, started hitting, needed just a little, like a fingernail was sticking out and uh, took a little bit off and now it's not. I mean, it, it'll come out if I tapped it. So now I got to figure out how I'm gonna melt this lead pretty sure this is lead it is pretty heavy guys uh, they told me it was aluminum but i mean i guess this much aluminum would be heavy but i mean if that fell on my foot it would hurt pretty bad so uh yeah i'm gonna figure out what i'm about to do here in fact i can feel a no we're good i don't know i don't want to melt it and put it on here because it might burn through i need to put some like a heat shield under it i don't know yet so i got a couple of things i gotta figure out okay a couple of things happened since uh, we last left off i went and cut this in half i do think it's aluminum uh took a lot more than i thought but we got that cut in half because i didn't want to do the uh whole thing because i don't think we're gonna need it all and if i do at least i ain't I don't waste it or something accident doesn't happen. So, all camping stuff here. I'm just getting everything up to temperature. And then I'm gonna get the oxyacetylene out and actually uh, melt everything. But I figured this can keep it hot and everything like that till, um, well, it's gonna kill me if I melt this table. Uh, but that this will keep everything hot until 
uh, like say if I had to pause or anything and keep it uh, liquefied. So that's the plan for that. But I just wanna give you an update on how I'm moving with the hand. So it's working. Uh, got our oxy acetylene out. Got everything melted. It's, uh, I think we're pretty good. I got some glo welding gloves. Um, got everything set up. So just gonna give it a little bit more so when I pull it off, it don't start uh, melting too soon. And uh, see what happens. Okay, so this side came out exactly like I wanted. Uh, we didn't get any in our, our guide. This side though filled up a lot quicker than I thought. I did, and you can see I made a mess. I did put on boots and then I got some up here. So, um, probably we're going to get creative, probably some map gas and everything. Um, but I'll, I'll figure that out. So, I didn't want any on this valve seat though, but I think after I do some grinding in here, it should come back around. My other issue is the the uh, block off. Hold on, I'm gonna put this glove on. Sorry, sorry. My block off came out a little bit. So I'm gonna have to figure that out too. Um, but I might just grind that down flush. But uh, yeah, so this thing was extremely hot. Um, wound up having to wrap it with the welding gloves and then using the arc welding gloves to uh, uh, to hold it but that worked out good let's try to do a little bit better on this side okay so on this one we put a screwdriver underneath and it came out really good I'm not looking for a professional job I, I would love to blend it very well but truthfully, I think I probably need to stop while I'm ahead. Uh, I think that's actually going to be pretty doggone good. So we're going to have to work on this side. I did. Uh, we're going to have to get it out that valve seat. I kind of would like the way it is here, but at the same time, just knowing the tooling I have, it's probably best. Actually, this one is probably the best. Um, I need something to that effect. Well, I guess I should have showed you before, but we had uh, a little bit of aluminum get around this edge here and a little bit here. All it took was a, uh, let me get it, a little chisel and a hammer and it chipped right off. So that was too easy. This side's uh, perfect. We'll probably grind down. I think there's a little bit of a fingernail there. We'll probably hit that just to make sure we don't have any issues when we go to um, uh, mount our intake. So, but let's get ready to flip her over. All right, so we have the other one. I'm gonna to try to knock this out with a, a punch and a screwdriver and, uh, and a hammer, I mean. And then we're gonna to try to do this side. You can see all the leaking and how it came out a little bit. See what we can do about that. And then we'll play around with the port. All right, some hammering and uh, we're just gonna thread it on out. Actually took the shape of our upper bolt hole you can see what we have going on here with me. That was a good bit of aluminum. Wow. I mean, who knows if it actually went in uh, full. But yeah, that, that's a lot of aluminum that went over. It went straight into that, uh, that exhaust bolt. So, all right, so that was easy. Let's get to the intake. So here's the intake side. You can see I goofed. I have it sticking out some. So I'm gonna take this chisel or this pry bar, see if we can't break some of this stuff off like that. And uh, I'm just gonna work this off camera and then uh, try to grind this flat. Okay, we used the, the big grinder with the, uh, we call it padded um, sand disky. But you can see what we have here. It looks pretty flat to me. So it's super hot right now. When I ran my hand over, it actually got me. The gasket I'm using is actually blanked off right so here. So this is what we got going on. I have my air Dremel somewhere. Oh, I do not know. Here it is. We're going to get the ball type. See, hopefully it don't get too clogged up. I'm going to start here. And try to get this off this valve seat because I do not want to take this back to a machine shop. 
if it happens it happens but i'm trying not to damage his valve seat at all and yeah well just see if we can't just work this out a little bit okay all done so i'll show you what i got that's what it looks like you can see blocked off here with a cast iron piece it's gonna valve's gonna open it's gonna go air remember air is going out these exhaust out and then boom so no more connection here's the other side same thing you can see what we got and then boom uh i am gonna bring them back to the exhaust or the machine shop let's see this one i think i did pretty good on not nicking the valve seat yeah, that one you can tell I started getting right there. A little bit there, so I want them to pressure test it. But here, I got pretty good right here. But it's still, I think, with seat. But this one is the one I, I goofed up on bad. Just got in a moment, a lot of grinding. And uh, goofed. So uh, hopefully they can fix that without too many issues. And... Um, get those back together other than that i'm super excited uh first time doing port work head work and uh i have metal shavings everywhere i'll show you what i used hopefully dogs don't run into that um this is i use a, a air dremel with a little sand disky and i use this carbine bit on a, a milwaukee I was using air for a little while on the uh, uh, on the grinder, but uh, my compressor started spitting water and it just got annoying. So anyways, use this and this to do all the port work and uh, did very well. I was pretty happy doing it on cast iron because it's pretty forgiving. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm gonna get this all bagged back up and put it in the car and get ready to take it to the machine shop.